open your soul to the Lord and maybe ask for forgiveness there first because you're on a spiral straight to hell. Fairfield High School is just another ordinary school in Iowa, United States, with a less than impressive rating, given that the academic performance of its students hasn't exactly been stellar over the years. Nonetheless, despite not being widely recognized for its academic accomplishments, this school has become infamous for an entirely different and unsettling reason. A shocking murder. November 3, 2021 marked the day when this school was put under an unfortunate spotlight as the lifeless body of Nohima Graber, a 66-year-old Spanish teacher at the school, was discovered concealed beneath a tarp in Chautauqua Park, Iowa. The heinous nature of this act initially baffled investigators. However, before long, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. Who could be responsible for this terrible crime? What might have driven someone to commit such a horrific act? Fairfield, Iowa, known for its serene lifestyle, combines a quaint small-town feel with modern comforts. This town has gained recognition as a center for mindfulness practices and holistic well-being. The community's focus on health and its picturesque setting make it an appealing choice for individuals seeking a retreat from urban complexities, aiming to embrace a more harmonious way of life. Despite its reputation as a meditation hub, Fairfield is not immune to disturbing crimes. The case of Nohima Graber is a stark reminder of this reality, that even peaceful towns like this have their share of unsettling incidents. Nohima Castillo's journey begins in Julapa, Velacruz, Mexico, where she was born on November 10, 1954, to parents Noé Castillo Aguiar and Maria Concepcion Castillo. Following her school years, Nohima embarked on a 17-year career as a flight attendant with Mexicana de Aviación. Alongside this, she pursued studies to become a commercial airline pilot, breaking barriers as one of Mexico's first women trained to operate passenger jets. Nohima married Paul Graeber on October 4, 1986, in Julapa, Veracruz, Mexico, and changed her surname to Graeber. In 1992, Nohima and Paul moved to Fairfield, where they raised their three children, Christian Graeber, Jared Graeber, and Nohima Marie Graber. She became an active participant in St. Mary Catholic Church and was a regular at the Daily Mass. As their children matured, Nohima made the bold choice in her 50s to pursue a degree in English and earn a teaching certificate from Iowa Wesleyan University in nearby Mount Pleasant. Her inaugural position as a Spanish teacher was at Atumwa High School, where she dedicated herself until 2012. Subsequently, she took the role of a Spanish teacher at Fairfield High School. Nohima's life centered on her students, family, faith, and community involvement. She had a routine of teaching, serving her parish, reading, and taking walks in Chautauqua Park. Despite her disciplined and compassionate life, tragedy awaited her as a teacher, leading her down an unforeseen path. In the halls of Fairfield High School, by late 2021, yet another season of exams had arrived. Nohima, the dedicated Spanish teacher, gave her all, hopeful that her students would achieve stellar grades. But just like any classroom, hers was a mix of triumphs and challenges, where some students soared while others fell short. As is customary, those who received less favorable grades expressed their frustrations, perhaps placing blame on their teacher. A typical tale, you might think. However, this year held a chilling departure from the norm. Amidst the routine, one student took their disappointment to a dangerous extreme. November 2, 2021, marked a day where the consequences of a few unfortunate grades unfolded. A student of Nohima's class sought a meeting with her to address his academic struggles. The content of their conversation remained undisclosed, but following their interaction, at around 4 p.m., Nohima took her van to Chautauqua Park, the place where she often enjoyed her post-school walks. Following this, Nohima's van exited the park approximately 42 minutes after her arrival, with two males in the front seats. However, Nohima was notably absent from the vehicle. Later, her car was located at the end of a quiet country road near Fairfield. However, Nohima was nowhere to be found. Worried for her well-being, her family filed a missing persons report the next day on November 3, 2021. Soon after, on that very same day, she was located. Yet, the circumstances of her discovery were far from what her husband, Paul Graber, had anticipated. Nohima's lifeless body was uncovered at Chautauqua Park, her remains were hidden under a blanket, wheelbarrow, and railroad ties. 
Forensic examination later revealed that she'd suffered a fatal beating inflicted by a baseball bat to the head. The pursuit of the perpetrator began immediately, and within a mere two days, on November 5, 2021, law enforcement successfully apprehended two suspects, 16-year-old Willard Miller and Jeremy Goodale. Both Miller and Goodale were enrolled as students at Fairfield High School, and notably, they'd been in the class led by Nohima Graber. Interestingly, it was Miller who had engaged in a discussion with Nohima regarding his unsatisfactory grades at school on November 2, 2021. Now, what led to the swift arrests of these two students? The breakthrough came from Snapchat messages that directly tied them to Nohima's murder. A confidential witness shared images of a Snapchat conversation, uncovering Goodale's admissions of being involved with another person and causing Nohima's death. The witness highlighted Goodale's statements that not only incriminated himself, but also specifically mentioned Miller by name. The search warrant for the Snapchat messages also reportedly shed light on the pair's actions. Allegedly, they'd surveilled Nohima, and the messages provided additional insights into the details of how they executed the crime, disposed of her body, and attempted to cover up evidence linked to the case. Another witness also informed the police that they'd seen a wheelbarrow being pushed along a street shortly before midnight on the night of the murder. During an interview with Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation Agents, Miller purportedly confessed to taking the wheelbarrow that was used to conceal Nohima's body from his own residence. Adding to the investigation, the police uncovered a crucial piece of information. A call had originated from Goodale's phone to a different witness, who then proceeded to pick up both Goodale and Miller from the rural road where Nohima's car had been found. This aligned with one of the witnesses' accounts of seeing two males driving away with Nohima's car from the park. All the elements fell neatly into place, indicating that Miller and Goodale were the two individuals at the center of this unfolding story. In a police interview, Miller expressed his frustrations with Nohima's teaching methods and how his grades in her Spanish class were affecting his GPA. However, Miller initially denied any involvement in Nohima's disappearance, but court documents indicate he later altered his statement. He admitted to having knowledge of the events, but claimed he didn't take part in the crime. According to his account, a roving group of masked kids were the actual perpetrators who allegedly coerced him into using his wheelbarrow to move her body and drive her van away from the park. During the phase of court hearings in December 2022, Miller's lawyer, Christine Branstad, argued that the search warrants were flawed because they didn't prove the informant's reliability. However, with strong evidence on hand, Miller's trial was scheduled for March 20, 2023 in Council Bluffs, while Goodale's trial was set for October 5, 2023 in Davenport. There was solid evidence, including information obtained from Miller's home, statements he made to the police as a 16-year-old, data from his cell phone, and a record of his conversations on his Snapchat account. As a result, it seemed almost certain that Miller would not be able to avoid facing the consequences of his actions. The final decision by the court was made on April 18, 2023, when both the accused pleaded guilty to first-degree murder in the death of Nohima Graber. On July 6, 2023, Miller was sentenced to life in prison eligible for parole after 35 years. In Iowa, a first-degree murder conviction carries a life imprisonment penalty. However, Iowa Supreme Court rulings mandate that juveniles convicted of even the most serious offenses be granted a chance for parole. Addressing Miller, Judge Sean Showers acknowledged, Your heinous actions resulted in the loss of Nohima Graber's life, creating an irreplaceable void for her family. I find that your intent and actions were sinister and evil. Those acts resulted in the intentional loss of human life in a brutal fashion. There's no excuse. There is not a systemic societal problem that explains or justifies your action. The judge added that a sentence of life imprisonment without parole might have been considered if permissible under state law. Following the sentencing, Miller expressed his apologies to both Nohima Graper's family and his own family who were present in the courtroom. I would like to take this opportunity to wholeheartedly accept responsibility for the role that I've played in the murder of Nohima Graber. I would like to apologize for my actions, first and foremost, to the family. I'm sincerely sorry for the distress that I've caused you and the devastation I've caused your family. And from the bottom of my heart, I am uh, sorry for your loss. I'm sorry to hear about Paul Graber. Um, I would also like to apologize to the community, to just the ripple effect that, I've, that my actions have had, the, everyone that has affected. I would like to apologize to 
you know, I'm a very rich church. Um, I know that she was very, I know now that she was a very active member there and, and doing a lot of good things there. Uh, I'd like to apologize for, for what I did and, and how that affected them. Um, I'd like to apologize to my family. I love you guys so much. And uh, um, I'm really sorry for what I've done. And how it's affected you. And I'm planning on getting back out there as soon as I can to make up for the last time. Nohima's brother-in-law, Tom Graber, stood in her husband Paul's stead as he had succumbed to metastatic cancer and passed away. However, Tom remained unconvinced by the apology. This is the first time I've ever heard you know, some type of an attempted apology for Mr. Miller. Um, I don't believe it because he showed no sign of remorse whatsoever. Conversely, prior to finalizing his plea agreement with prosecutors, Goodale had intended to testify against Miller during his trial. According to Goodale's account to authorities, Miller was the one who initially struck Nohima with a bat, while he acted as a lookout. Goodale stated that he used the bat to strike her again after the initial blow failed to kill her. Goodale's sentencing was scheduled for August 23, 2023. Prosecutors planned to pursue a sentence of 25 years to life for Goodale. Additionally, both Miller and Goodale were mandated to pay $150,000 in restitution to the Graber family. Despite the impending prison terms for the perpetrators and the justice finally attained by the Graber family, the haunting aftermath of this heinous act lingers. Fairfield police officer Julie Kinsella addressed the community's ordeal during the hearing, saying, We had students that were scared to death to attend class. We had teachers that didn't want to teach for concerns of their own safety. I don't think that our community will ever be the same again. I think it's devastated us. So, what are your thoughts on this case? Do you believe the teaching community in Fairfield will regain a sense of safety? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If there's a case you'd like us to cover, don't hesitate to share your suggestions in the comments section below. For more captivating true crime stories, like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Stay safe, and see you next time on Mysterious 7.